Let's do it. up i am i'm in uh st cloud minnesota clearwater area that's near the headquarters uh there's a great petro here uh cassius king says that's where he uh i think that's where he said he caught diabetes <laughs> they got some huge rolls here it's really good stuff i didn't even i went in for breakfast and uh got a shower so i'm all ready to go i'm gonna be going up to fargo north dakota um today and then tomorrow, I think, uh, Grand Forks, uh, I don't know if that's Minnesota, or I think it's Minnesota. It's right on the border, I think, of, uh, North Dakota. I actually saw some, uh, I was in, uh, Bismarck, North Dakota, when I went through Jamestown on the 94, I saw Buffalo. So, I'll show, I think I got a picture. Uh, I tried to take a GoPro of it, but, uh, you really couldn't see, so I just took a still shot of the GoPro, so I'll put that in the video. And it, it, it's, uh, I'm not familiar with the, this isn't exactly the Midwest. This is more like the North Central, in my opinion. Um, they had me on the target run. Planners liked what I did, so I was, I was happy to be back on it. Anything to stay out the East Coast, uh, if you know how I like to roll. Uh, it's going well. The, uh, my distribution center for target is, right within six miles of all the mayhem that's been going on with this uh, shooting of this uh, gentleman Dante that uh, has caused some riots in the Minneapolis area. So I got a few emergency alerts that said 10 a.m. to 6, 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. stay home curfew. I heard sirens going and so I decided, you know what I'll do is I'll stay at the, t at the targets, at the stores at night. So I've been able to do that. They give you plenty of time to, to work that into your schedule. Um, so there's an opportunity that has come up. Oh, what I wanted to say about North Dakota is uh, I don't think they do spring. You know how Arizona doesn't change the time zone? Well, I don't think uh, North Dakota does spring because I got there and it was uh, freezing temperatures, had some sleet, and uh, <laughs> yeah, it was cold. But it's a beautiful day out today. And uh, let's see if I can show you. I mean, this is just a truck, truck lot, but you can see outside, it's nice, clear, beautiful day. So, I have a, an opportunity that was presented to me by my dispatch. Said they're having a problem with one account out in, uh, that goes from Plainfield which is basically Indianapolis. I said, I'm listening. I got family and friends in Indianapolis. I grew up there. So, all right, let's hear more. And then they said, um, they said, well, it goes out to the Midwest. I said, right on. That's, that's where I've been wanting to go. So it's pretty much up to 29. Uh, it's like anywhere, anywhere from Oklahoma city up to, uh, even like, uh, Wisconsin area. So there's about four lanes that they're having a problem with. So they're gonna to try to set a dedicated driver to it. So they're gonna present it Monday. And you know, it was like 800 van drivers and there was 10 of them in the, in the line for this opportunity. And I'm in the running. It looks like, it looks like they're looking at me. Um, he sends me the info and said, do you think you'll have any problem making these runs? I said, well, hold on. I said, just do basic math. If you can, if you can make it, if you can average 50 miles an hour within the uh, DOT times, then yeah, whatever it is, I can make it. I go, as long as it doesn't uh, go against compliance of DOT, there's no reason I shouldn't make it. So um, I told him, I said, find out for me why the drivers have what they call service failures when you don't make an appointment. And let's understand what the problem is there. If it's just time management, then I think the problem is, is there's, uh, well, I don't, you know, I don't want to speculate because it doesn't matter. I need to know what the real, what the real problem is. You know, 
if it's just time management, then okay, I can work on that. I, I like to roll. So he said, well, sometimes you got to go right out of your 10 hour sleep or right into the, right into work. And I'm like, well, that's how you're supposed to do it. I only sleep, uh, or I'm only off duty 15 or 20 hours because I'm waiting for another load or that's just how, how it works out. So, um, if I can get up and go after 10 hours, I'm generally ready to do that. Um, I mean, I don't know how else you can make miles without doing that. You don't, you don't make any money sleeping in the, in the sleeper typically that I know of. Um, so we'll see how that goes. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of hopeful on that. Um, but they're live, live unloads for this company at live. It's a live unload and then they reload you with some returns and you usually have two stops, two stores, and then you head back. So there's no trailer dancing. You do basically back in and they do their thing and then you go. So I'm all down with that and I can stay at the at the, uh, the stores. I'll divulge the stores later if I get this gig. Um, so I'm like, yeah, this sounds like a, and I don't have to, I don't have to mess with those <laughs> those nasty pin locks kingpin locks um that's i got that down pretty well now uh you kind of learn how to be efficient with those things and and efficient meaning efficiently not getting grease all over you and then also efficiently on how quickly you can put it on take it off and uh one driver told me you don't have to put the key in when you hook it back up and that's been a big help because if you can do it with one hand that's only one hand potentially going to be getting and I'll tell you what, you gotta wear a hat because if you just touch the ceiling of the under the trailer where the kingpin is, you're gonna have grease on your head. Um, or sometimes on your back, depending on how you crouch. So it's all good. I'll keep you posted. I'm excited to uh, to see how this develops. But um, you know, I've been I've been manifesting. I've been saying I, I got a thing that pops up every day, you know, like you know, one of the things, you know, what are some of the things that you want to do? And uh, I keep t reminding myself, um, I want to drive in the Midwest. I want to drive in the Midwest. And then all of a sudden this popped up and he said, well, it's a lot of competition. We'll see how it goes. And I was like thinking to myself, no, I'll probably get this gig. Cause this is what I've been, this is what I've been for probably like the last two or three months been saying, I'm going to drive the Midwest. And I figured, you know, if you say, if you say it enough, it'll happen. And it could go the it could go the the other way too, you know. If you keep saying you're gonna get in an accident, then you probably are. So if you keep putting out there some good vibes, and I don't know, it didn't hurt. So we'll see. I may not get it, but uh, you'll be the first to know. So you guys take care. Hope you're doing well. And um, one real quick shout out to uh, Brian. He's a subscriber that was uh, working in. The, I think it was in. I want to say it was Vegas, but it wasn't, but I think it's up, up in that area. And he was in the gaming industry, uh, gambling and stuff where he would, he worked in those casinos and stuff like that. And he finally got his, uh, CDL to a local company. So congrats to you. And, uh, thanks for all the new subscribers and you guys stay tuned for more kangaroo trucker. We'll talk to you. Bye. Did the trailer dance over there? I usually park it right here. As you can see, the winter's not over, but look at these dark colored rocks like, incredible dark. Looks like it's a coating on the outside of it. I don't know what kind of rock that is, but very interesting. A lot of people take the back route. Run into a lot of traffic coming from the back area, but 
As you can see, I got a little snow going on here in Duluth, North Dakota. Or Minnesota, I'm not sure where I am. But I know I'm in snow, but it's not bad. The, uh, the hills aren't too bad at all, so it's all good.